Well, what's up, guys? So we're going to be doing a quick report. Um, I'm going to start putting these up sooner or later. So the first disease we're going to go through is malaria. And I already presented this to my class as a report. I actually did pretty well on it. So I thought, you know what, let's just upload this and uh, see how it goes. So our report is on basically the life cycles and importance of overall aspects in malaria. So as you can see from my title, Malaria and the Dangers of Parasitic Diseases by Jimmy Wu. That's me, if you don't know already. So let's move on. So there are a few uh, common names for it. You can have Quartan malaria, falciparum malaria, bitterian fever, blackwater fever, and tertian malaria. These are just some of the more common names that are given to this particular disease. Um, there's not much special. There's nothing really that special about them. They're all about the same thing. It's all about the same disease. And you know, every disease has many names. <laughs> All right, let's move on. So the discovery is by Charles Louis Alphonse Laverin, which is this old-looking guy right there. He actually discovered the actual parasite itself. It was in the early late 1700s, early 1800s. He was working on some patients who are affected with this particular disease, and you know. Uh, Laverin didn't really intend to discover anything special, but he did find some merozoites, um, some parasitic merozoites, inside the red blood cells of people affected with malaria. So that led him to think that malaria is caused by a parasitic disease. And later, in 1807, he won the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine due to his discoveries. So thanks to Laverin, we have a better knowledge of how malaria is, well, how malaria affects people, and that's parasites. Second person we have is Carlos Finlay. Now Finlay was, he was a person, he was a scientist working in Cuba, actually Havana, and what he was doing was he originally was not treating malaria, he was treating yellow fever instead and he basically pretty much coined the idea that there are some diseases such as yellow fever that can be transmitted via insects in this case the mosquitoes so that was a great help to the uh, developmental sciences of this particular disease which we are talking about right now So there are four types of malaria. You got Plasmodium vivax, as is abbreviated as PV, Plasmodium malariae, abbreviated as PM, and uh, Plasmodium alveolum, as well as Plasmodium falciparum. The falciparum variety is a cerebral variety, and it's probably the most dangerous of the four. Um, the vivax is the most common. And it's not as dangerous as the falciparum, but every single variety of malaria needs to be treated with caution. So whether you got the malaria, avail, falciparum, or vivox, you pretty much need treatment for all of them. All right, transmission of the disease. Well, I'm just going to use the example of plasmodium falciparum and plasmodium um, vivox. And these are the scientific names of the viruses that transmit um, malaria. And they have a sexual and asexual form. The sexual form is actually what produces the next generation. And the sexual form produces itself inside the mosquito, whereas the asexual form um, it reproduces itself as in duplicating itself inside humans. The asexual form is actually what causes you to become sick, whereas the sexual form uh, is lays dormant in your body. And as you probably already know, 
Uh, malaria is transmitted via mosquitoes of the genus Anopheles. And I think that's actually not an Anopheles mosquito. I accidentally put that there. Um, and uh, it looks like an 80s Aegypti, if I'm not mistaken. But whatever the case, it is transmitted by one genus of mosquitoes. Although occasionally 80s, I have read that they are capable of doing so and transmitting, but I think we'll just stick with Anopheles for sure because this is confirmed, whereas 80s is sort of a, a maybe, a probable vector. Okay, so some symptoms you might get include anemia, um, bloody stools, you get chills, convulsions, coma, basically the usual of diseases. Um, and also headaches, jaundice, if you don't know what that is, that is where your gallbladder uh, fails to produce bio, and when it fails to produce bile, your skin turns a yellowish coloration, as well as muscle pain and fever, which is probably the most apparent, apt symptom that you see in malaria, as well as other diseases such as dengue and yellow fever. So, this is just a little picture I put on there. You get headaches, fever, fatigue, pain, back pain, chills, sweating, dry cough, and uh, enlarging of spleen and vomiting. So, basic symptoms of diseases. There are a few tests for malaria. You have a physical examination, which is usually examined, uh, which usually includes examining your liver or your spleen, and if you have it, there's a chance that your liver will be enlarged and your spleen will also be enlarged, as well as blood smears taken at 6 to 12 hour intervals in order to confirm the diagnosis of, your, of whether malaria is present in your body or not. And that's just a little picture I put in the back. Before we move on to uh, the actual transmission, let's just get at this out of the way. We got the okinete, which is the actual sexual reproductive form of this parasite. The sporozoite, which is the first form that actually gets out of the mosquito and into your bloodstream, as well th as the merozoite, which is the one that infects your red blood cells and make you become sick. So let's move on. And here's just a little plasmodium falciparum life cycle. You know, mosquito bites you and gets in your liver cells, gets out of your liver cells, some of them produce into um, the merozoites that attack your system and actually cause you to be sick, whereas others become an immature form of a gametocyte and actually is the dormant sexual form that will be uh, entering the mosquito. And then inside the mosquito they develop and, you know, release of it via the mosquito into the person's bloodstream and so starts the whole life cycle of the plasmodium um, parasite. So let's move on. Now the transmission process is probably the most interesting part of this disease. The sporozoite, which is this in the background, it's like a slug looking thing. Um, it enters the human bloodstream. That's the first step. The first thing it's it does really it's the only the only thing it does is it heads for the liver and after entering the liver it will start turning itself into either a sexual form a gametocyte or a merozoite um, if it produces into a merozoite it will rapidly have a lot of nuclear divisions and the cell will segment and merozoites will form and eventually the cell will explode and the merozoites will spread throughout the body and enter your red blood cells. Then once it enters your red blood cells it starts feeding on your hemoglobin inside and it duplicates inside your red blood cell as well until the red blood cell bursts and the parasites will pretty much spread to other red blood cells as well. And that's pretty much where the bad stuff happens. 